Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. We're talking about QuickBooks today. We're talking about managing multiple business entities within one QuickBooks online subscription. We've had a couple videos about this. If you haven't seen the intros to this, watch those first, okay? Uh, you'll see links in the description. What we're talking about today is dealing with intercompany transactions, okay? So while this is a really good strategy to have multiple business entities in one subscription, we save a ton of money, we get reporting that's juxtaposed next to each other. We do have a few potential pitfalls we have to look out for, all right? And one specific one is when money is flowing between two businesses. So I wanna talk about how we deal with it. It's actually really, really simple. We just have to be careful with things, all right? So join me, I'm gonna show you how we can do this. One QuickBooks Online subscription, it must be QuickBooks Online Plus, and managing multiple businesses and transferring money. All right, so to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go way back in time to 2016, just because that's a point in time where my books are kind of clean, right? So I'm gonna go here and uh, pull up a balance sheet by business. Now this is one of the huge benefits to having multiple business entities in one QuickBooks Online account. I have these two business entities, 34 Long LLC and ID Property Management, and I have a balance sheet juxtaposed, right? So I have my checking account for each of those. This 34 Long LLC actually owns some property we can see here. This ID property management really isn't doing anything other than holding cash at the moment, okay? So there's a nice looking balance sheet, right? Now, what if we transferred money from one business to the other? Well, one of the first things you probably think to do is to create a transfer. And this might happen within the bank feed or you might create one manually. QuickBooks Online has a really nice, convenient transfer, okay? So I can go in here and say that ID Property Management, so let's say, say that's kind of like my funding account. So if, if you're like me, my, my holding companies, they don't really do much from, with the cash. You know, they just kind of hold on to property. And then my other businesses are kind of doing the operating, so they're paying for stuff, they're paying off credit cards. So let's say that I need to transfer money to that holding company. So ID Property Management, that's my property management company, is transferring money to 34 long checking. Let's say that $10,000 gets transferred over. All right, I'm gonna do it again 2016 so that it shows up on its balance sheet. All right, so $10,000, I'm gonna do save and close right there. Okay, well what we're gonna see within this balance sheet is not specified comes up, okay? So I moved that money into 34 long LLC checking, but you notice on that transfer, there wasn't a place for me to indicate the business that I was using, okay? QuickBooks doesn't know that this, this checking account is owned by this entity, and therefore it has no way of associating that transfer to those businesses. So rule number one, when you're using multiple business entities within one subscription, is do not use the transfer function. Okay, it is really convenient, but it doesn't have a place for us to indicate the business or the location, which leads to a not specified column over here. And that's no good. You want to be able to have a balance sheet by business and anything that's not specified, that's not gonna help you, okay? So transfers will not work, we cannot use them. So I'm gonna delete that transaction. That's really the only transaction type you can't use. So that's rule number one. Okay, so if you are transferring money from one business to the other, I recommend using a journal entry. Okay, now journal entries are a little bit more laborious and they kind of might take a little bit more time, but remember, the benefit of getting multiple businesses in our QuickBooks Online account comes at a small cost. That cost is we just gotta be a little bit more careful with these intercompanies. So anytime we're moving money between companies, we gotta be a little bit more careful. Let's use a journal entry, make sure we can capture everything. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, the equivalent transaction with a journal entry, and we're gonna be able to use business on this one, okay? So I'm gonna use my um, 34 long LLC checking account is going to get $10,000. We're gonna debit that account $10,000. And the ID property management checking account, we're gonna credit it $10,000, right? Now for 34 long checking, notice I have my business up here. I can just indicate that. ID property management, and hey, sure, we're using class, so let's Go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I've indicated the business there and I can save and close this, okay? This is one step better than the transfer and this is going to show 
the money within the appropriate account. So now I have 16,005 and I have 130 here in ID property management check. It went down by $10,000, okay? So we have almost accomplished what we were looking for. However, this is the next pitfall and the most common one when we have multiple businesses in one QuickBooks account. So the fundamental accounting equation is that assets must equal liabilities and equity. Now QuickBooks forces us to do that within a journal entry. So within that journal entry I just made, my debits must equal my credits, okay? However, QuickBooks doesn't know that we're doing this whole balance sheet by business thing. I've got an issue here. If I were to roll up my assets and then roll up my liabilities and equity, you'll notice that while my total is equal, which is always going to be the case, it's impossible for it to not be the case because QuickBooks forces it, my total by business is not. So let's say at the end of the year, you are preparing your taxes and you have everything in one set of books, it's really convenient, and you're gonna filter down on this uh, 34 long LLC um, balance sheet and we don't need we just do total there and, and we have this nice neat balance sheet for that 34 long LLC you're gonna send this to your accountant and they're gonna say no way that's not possible assets cannot equal or cannot not equal liabilities and equity right so we have to fix that so when we have multiple businesses we have to be aware of the potential for things to kind of get thrown off like that okay and it's really easy to fix we just gotta be ready for it. And the way that we can fix this is that we can have some kind of account to handle intercompany loans or intercompany equity, okay? It's just a way for us to tell QuickBooks where the money came from. So in this case, the money went into 34 Long LLC, so we have a debit for 34 Long LLC. We have no credit for 34 Long LLC, vice versa for ID property management. We have a credit for $10,000. We do not have a debit for that. Okay, so when it comes to these journal entries, we, as the operator of this business, we have to be one step smarter here, and we have to say, do I have matching debits and credits by business for this journal entry? QuickBooks is not gonna check that for us. And how we, we can handle that is with an intercompany loan account. I'm gonna show you that right now. So I'm gonna create a loan account called intercompany loans. And I'm just treating this as these are loans to and from my, my entities, okay? So I'm creating this new account. Now this could be a liability, it could be equity, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna make it a liability for now. I like the term, you know, uh, the um, you know, intercompany loan sounds like a liability to me, okay? So I'm gonna make that a liability account, all right? Now I used to, you might have seen this in some other videos, I used to make an asset and then a liability, and I found that it's actually easier just to do one account, okay? Uh, and we can use it for both, all right? So here I have my intercompany loan. Now for ID property management, I currently have a credit of 10,000. So if I need my balance sheet for ID property management to be accurate, I need to have an equivalent debit. So I'm gonna put a 10,000 right here as well. And similarly, I can pull on that same exact intercompany loans account and do a $10,000 credit for 34 long LLC. Okay. And if I kind of move these up, if we just look at lines one and two, here I have debits and credits for 34 long matching, similar for ID property management. So I've accomplished this transfer of funds from 34 long checking to ID property management checking, and hopefully I've kept my balance sheet in check with this intercompany loan. Let's save and close and see what happens. So go back to my summary report, I wanna see my balance sheet now. Okay, first thing I'm gonna check, notice that this didn't change at all, 16,005, 130, perfect. First thing I'm gonna check, I'm gonna hit my collapsing here, and all of a sudden I have assets, 171 equals liabilities and equity, same. So how did that offset work? It happened with that intercompany loan account. In this case, 34 long has received a loan of $10,000 from ID property management, 
And so on the balance sheet, we have 10,000, negative 10,000 total for the entire portfolio is always going to be zero. Okay. And that's how we can manage this whole thing, intercompany loans. So this happens a lot, right? This happens whenever one company pays the other company, right? We can't just simply transfer the money. We need to have a balance sheet by business that is accurate. This is the most common pitfall that you run into when you're managing multiple entities within one QuickBooks Online account, all right? So I wanted to really dive in, get specific with how we fix that. So if you are managing multiple businesses and you are getting similar issues, whether you're getting not specified or you're getting the balance sheet is not working, go ahead and write in the comments what your exact situation is and I can do a follow-up on how to fix that. But this is the most common issue we see. So within Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, which is our end-to-end -end course, we have lots and lots of students who are using multiple businesses and we talk about this all the time in our Q&As. How can we get things reconciled so that everything lines up? And once we have that process in place, we're using these intercompany loans, everything's in one set of books, everything's so nice and neat, we can juxtapose our balance sheets or our profit and losses next to each other and everything works out so great. So we're doing that within the course. If you're not in the course, I encourage you to sign up, uh, incomedigs.com forward slash R-E-A-B, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We'd love to have you in there. But until next time, let me know if you have any questions about this or any of the other videos we have out there. We'd love to hear your comments, feedback, and suggestions for our future videos. And we will see you at incomedigs.com and on the next video.